So what's going on guys, Kate is here and welcome back to a brand new video. For today I will show you the best new stealth build in Hogwarts Legacy. So in this guide I will show you what spells and gear you want to get. Then I will explain what are the best talents, gear upgrades and shades to use for early and end game content. And then lastly I will show you the best gameplay and even which stats you need to prioritize when leveling. So you would be able to get the best results and highest damage possible and much more. So no matter how low or high level or gear your character has, you can easily use this build and follow the step by step guide. So if this sounds interesting to you then let's get right into it. So then moving over to the build and our main objective with the setup will be to first of all become invisible, then sneak up on enemies and then use Pacificus Totalus or any other damage spell that will do very high damage and at the same time the enemies won't be able to hit us back and we will be investing points into the stealth talents and shades, so we could buff our damage while invisible and much more. So overall this build is incredibly fun to use, because we can sneak up on high level enemies, and then one shot them, or even by using the rest of our abilities, we will be able to make the enemy stay far away from us, so he won't be able to use his spells, and we will do all the damage without being hit even once. So if you're looking for the best invisibility build, then this is the one for you. So then with that said, let's move over to our talents. And as you get one talent per each level, so expect to max most of your talent tree to more than 50%. But then for the first 10 to 15 levels, each point matters. So then first of all, we want to spend 3 points into the core category. And we want to unlock the spell knowledge 1 and 2. And then the swift move as well. Then let's move over to the stealth category. And we want to max this out. Then let's go over to the next one, which is the dark cards. And we want to unlock the blood curse, enduring curse, crucio mastery, curse suffer and avada kedavra mastery. And then lastly, we want to go into the spells category and unlock the Axio Mastery, Incendio Mastery and Confringo Mastery. As I said at the start, Hogwarts Legacy doesn't have the same talent system, like in other games. So I recommend to first of all only use the talents I told you to unlock first, but then when you're higher level, then you can spend your talent points in whatever order you like. So then let's move over to the gear, and in this game the gear and stats are very basic. So we have our health, defense and offense. And then in total we have 6 gear pieces. Each one of these items will increase one of your stats. And all that you wanna do is after each few quests keep checking your inventory. And use the gear that has this green arrow. Or then sell it if it has a red one. The gear that you use doesn't really matter besides the upgrades and traits that you can enchant the gear with. So we can upgrade our gear by using the loom in our room of requirement. And we can only upgrade the gear that is either way blue, purple or orange aka legendary. The more you will play the better equipment you will get. But basically all you wanna do is come to this loom and constantly upgrade your gear. And each gear can be upgraded 3 times by pressing the upgrade and then use one of the materials. Upgrading your equipment will just simply increase its stats. And you can get the feathers and other materials to upgrade your gear with from the shops and beasts that you have in your vivarium. What I usually do is after playing the game for about 30 minutes, I teleport back to the room of requirement. And then I brush and feed all of my pets. And they will give me materials which then I can use to upgrade my gear. So in short, you wanna do this constantly to all of your gear pieces. And then lastly, while we're talking about gear, the last way that we can improve our stats is by using the trait mechanic. So what we do again is click on the loom, but this time click on view traits. And here you can see all the bonuses that you can put on your gear. Every high level gear has one slot in which you can put one level 1 trait, then one level 2 trait or then one level 3 trait. Again the same as with upgrading your gear, you will use feathers and other materials that you gather from your beasts. But on top of all of this, this time you will need to spend extra time and discover the traits that you wanna use. So some traits offer defensive abilities while others will buff your damage or attack. You can obtain traits by collecting the trait recipes from the bandit camps. You will have to look for this camp icon in the world to find one. So then with that said, when you start getting your traits on your gear, you only want to use the unforgivable, concentration and ambush trait. Of course, you will start with level 1 traits, but the more you will play, the better traits you will unlock. So then at the end, you will want all of your gear with the traits I previously mentioned, but all at level 3. So then let's move over to our spells, and in general, this build will be using 8 spells. 
so two sets of four spell presets. And if you did not know by now, then by using your first talent point into the spell knowledge one, you can unlock additional four spell presets and much more. So then for the first spell we have the disillusionment. This is the most important ability for our build, because by activating it we will become invisible. Then the second spell is called Glacius. This ability will freeze enemies and make them take increased follow-up damage. Then the third spell is called Confringo. This is a long-range bolt that deals damage on impact. Enemies hit with the fire attack will continue to take damage for a few seconds, but during that time collisions will result in incendiary burst, which will do even more damage. Then the fourth spell is called Crucio. This ability will cause enemies to take damage over time, and this curse can curse multiple enemies at once. Then for the next one we have the Levioso. This is a fun spell that will make enemies levitate. For us to be undetectable and untouchable, we need spells that make enemies stunned or immobilized. Then for the next one we have the Asio. This skill will summon or basically pull enemies or objects closer. This is a good ability that won't do damage but is very useful to break enemy casting or just to use in completing all the puzzle quests in the game. Then for one of the last spells we have the Incendio. This skill will shoot a quick burst of fire. While the range is short, all enemies hit with the fire will take burning damage constantly. And then lastly, we will be using the one and only Avada Kedavra. This skill is very simple. On whoever you use it, he will get one-shotted. Yes, this spell is very OP, but has a long cooldown. So especially in quests, you only want to use the spell on the strongest enemies. And unlocking the skill will require for you to reach at least level 25. So if you're not at that point yet, then you can switch the skill with any of the normal damage spells, like Defendo or Bombarda. Then as well as you can see, we can unlock the third spell preset and even the fourth one. But in my opinion, two presets are plenty enough for combat. And by the time we will use all eight spells, the first ones will be ready to be used again. So then lastly for our essential combat spells, like most of us already know, we have the basic cast, which by pressing a left click will do a simple basic attack. Then your Q spell is called Protego, which is your basic defensive spell. And if you get hit while holding it, then not only you will take no damage, but you can stun the enemy as well. Then the next skill is the Z button, which you can use if you're fighting enemies in places with small rocks or objects, and you will be able to throw them at any of your targets. Then the next spell is called Ancient Magic, which is basically like your ultimate ability. So by eliminating monsters you can collect their essence, which then if this bar reaches full, then you can press the X on enemies and do your ultimate ability, which will do very high damage. And then lastly we have the Pacificus Totalus. So if you're using the invisibility spell called Delusionment, then you can sneak up on enemies and then press the F button to permanently stun your enemies and finish them off with just one single hit. Then another way that we can boost up our damage is by using potions. So for most of the leveling, this build can easily defeat every single enemy. But just in case at the very end game, if you really need more buffs, then I recommend to use the Maxima Potion. All the other potions are not that good. And mainly you should not worry about taking damage because as long as you dodge and block, Getting to low HP should not be a problem, but then on the other hand, we could always use more DPS. So to increase your damage, use the Maxima Potion, or any of these combat plants. All plants are really good, but I personally like the Chomping Cabbage, because it is very cheap and easy to get, and it can damage multiple enemies at once. So then with that said, let's move over to the gameplay, where I will show you the best spell rotation. So most of the spells are very self-explanatory. But just in case, here's the spell combos and rotations that you want to use. So we want to start the fight by using the disillusionment spell and become invisible. Then we sneak up on enemies and use the Pacificus Totalus. And but then if we get discovered, then we want to use the Glacius and then finish it off with the Confringo. Or then another combo is to use the Levioso, then Crucio, then Axio and then finish it off with the Incendio. As this build is more sneaky and much more different than other builds, so there is no one particular order of the spells that you should use. But basically, remember that we always want to stay invisible and use our main damage dealers as much as possible. And then if we get discovered, then we can one-shot enemies as well with the Avada Kedavra, Pacificus Totalis, Crucio and much more. And as well, because of our talents and traits, we will be very hard target to detect. And while we are invisible, we will get damage buffs. And then last but not the least, of course, by default, you want to keep on using the dodge or Q to escape enemy attacks. And then as well, keep on using the left click for basic attacks and that's about it. 
So with that said, I really do appreciate everyone for watching guys and I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any suggestions, feedback or other good Hogwarts Legacy builds that you would like to see in the next video, then feel free to leave your comments in the comment section down below. And while you're doing that, please click like, subscribe and enable that notification bell, so this way you could support the channel and you won't miss any more amazing content from me. With all this said, you have an amazing day and I will see you in my next video, so take it easy, peace.